What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for another episode of my time at Portia. Fun little game, interesting little title that I'm pretty stoked about getting started with. Ooh, it's a rainy day, I didn't know there was weather in this game. I played a whole bunch and I never had a rainy day. This is pretty sweet. The good news about today is that we have a crazy amount of SP that we're going to be able to run with. I actually want to like run the meet and greet, so with the meet and greet did I get everybody? I think I got everybody except for Sophie. And I don't know where the hell Sophie's at. Sophie's like... so. Oh, she's at Sophie's Ranch. That would figure. That seems like a decent naming strategy. Where can you find Sophie's at? At a ranch that produces Sophie's. So let's head over to Sophie's Ranch through this field. I'm not going to run backwards naked through it or anything like that. This is a business trip, not a pleasure trip. Oh, she got like a little umbrella hat. Man, people out here are fancy. They got that, hey, how you doing? What's up? I'm new in town. How are you doing? Sophie's granddaughter. I was about to go talk to your mom. How's it going? Or your grandma? Hey, what's up? She's having trouble remembering things, huh? She'll remember me. It's okay. Let's go! Time to talk to Sophie at Sophie's Ranch. I assume that she sells us, like, animals or something like that so that we can actually have critters around. It seems like an odd place to put your store, though. Like, I can't imagine that a lot of foot traffic comes through. Just position-wise, seems a little bit dubious. Where's this old lady at? Old lady! Old lady! Aw, oh, man, she's out in the field. Hold on, I gotta go talk to old lady. What's up, old... Oh, leaping over a fence because, hey, it's a duck. Ooh, I'm holding a duck. Greetings, mallard. How are you? Let me place you on the earth. <gasps> There's baby chickens. What's up, baby? That's a big baby chicken right there. That's a beefy baby chicken. That thing is girthy. That is a large baby chicken. I feel bad for whatever egg had to be pooped out of the mama chicken for that one. Hello, nice to meet you. If you have any feed for... Okay, so cool. It looks like she does food items or seeds. Cool. And so that mission is done. Before we get started with any of the other fun stuff we're going to do here today, let's be on our way and go talk to the mayor and see how he decides to reward us for going out and apparently talking to people. I don't know. There he is. Everybody got an umbrella hat but me. I feel kind of left out. How's it going, man? How are you? My son Gus is nothing like me except for his talent and good-looking face. Do you not do the thing? I guess I just get the reward of the quest when it gets turned in. That's cool. Let's go out and we'll get some materials. We should also have a whole bunch of, I think, random copper bars that should be done. They went overnight while I was sleeping, while I was schlepping, doing my schlep stuff. Uh, we've got an axe out right now. Yeah, we're a little bit low on wood. Let's go ahead and fix that deficit very rapidly. As far as things go that we want to work on, we need to get copper ore. And until we get that, we're kind of in an impasse. What is this right here? We found Landweed. Hooray, Landweed! We can become Portia's first illicit dealer. We can get ourselves into all kinds of... I mean, I already tried to hit on a nun and murder a guy with a pickaxe. Uh, it feels like weed is probably the least of my worries right there. What else is going on on this side? Uh, another rock over here. Nope, you missed. Hand-eye coordination, pal. Hand-eye coordination. You gotta be... You gotta do better. Just do better, I guess is the way that I would put it. Uh, we don't have any money right now. I could show you the empty dungeon if you want, but maybe we'll do that at the end of this episode, rather at the front end. Because, like, there's nothing in there. It's not going to be incredibly interesting. There is, like, a little cutscene that plays when you first go in and you talk to, like, the Adventurer's Guild and stuff like that. But that's for, what is this right here? This tree looks like it has big red things on it. Huh. Well, they ain't falling out. Those are, like, coconut-sized apples or something over there. Gotta watch your head when that's falling down. On this side, it looks like we've got a couple of hot air balloons. That are just floating around. There's a lot of those nowadays. You're looking at one of them right now. What does this guy have going on? Weapons. It says weapons something. Weapons research. What? Hazardous ruins. Not open in this version. Coming soon. Okay. I will cease and desist then. So here's the abandoned ruin in case you were worried. We need like 80 bucks to go inside though. If we don't have 80 bucks, they're not going to let us in. Hey there. First time ruin diving? Yep. Alrighty, well let me explain. All the ruins in the Alliance of Free Cities are regulated by the Civil Corps. To enter the ruins, you gotta go and pay a maintenance fee. Then, you enter, I give you the jetpack scanner, very handy ancient relics. Mining for resources becomes a lot easier when you have these equipped. When you come out, we'll need them back, since they're very rare. This one beside me is an abandoned ruin. No monsters, robots in there, just resources and relics like power stones. Anything you find in the ruins, you can keep. Unless it's an ancient weapon, and then you gotta give it to the church. Alright, I'm done. Have fun and be safe in there. There's like a big piece of metal right there, too. I gotta get some more, like, resources, though. We don't have 80 bucks. If we have 80 bucks, we can go into the ruin and I can show it to you. But I already said I was gonna do that at the end of the day, so maybe we'll put that off for a little bit. I'm actually looking for, like, a serious amount of stones, too. So we've got Alfred and Vi. 
That's a hell of a tower they live inside of. Good lord. I actually haven't taken a ton of time to like explore around town and see what there is. It looks like there are various little areas over here you can get up and into and take a look at. Is that rock mineable? No. Can't mine that. What is this? Ah, not opening this ruin either. But I want to go in hazardous ruins. I want to get myself murdered by random monsters nice and early in my quest so that I don't have to go through the struggle of, like, getting to that point, you know? Like, why level up at level 1 when you could just bum rush through and, you know, die to something level 80 at level 2? Like, we don't have to grind our way up. We can experience endgame content right now. I wonder if that bird's nest does anything. There's a bird's nest on top of this house. Can I do anything with it? No, it's just a decorative bird's nest. Well, fine then, nature. I didn't want to plunder your bounty anyways. Maybe I'll find another way to go. I gotta find some more rocks around here. I haven't had a good rock supply this whole time, and I want a rock! What is this? Have you seen me? It's a corgi? Okay, I'll keep an eye out for it. Maybe we'll see him around. Why is there a trench-coated man walking around out here like he's gonna flash somebody or something? You know that's what he looked like. He looks like he's up to something. He looks like he's guilty. I don't know what he's done, but he done something. I found a kitty on the road. Its name is Pinky. Hello, kitty. Mew, can I feed you? Meow, meow. He wants milk, golden salmon, or catfish. I don't have any of those things. But I would love to feed you so that you will come live at my house forever and presumably poop in my fields where I will accidentally step on it like a hidden little slide mine every single morning. The joy of owning cats. The joy of owning outdoor cats. You know, a little bit more stone over here that I think I'm going to take with me too. There we go. Let's get that good stuff. Then we'll cook up some bricks so we can get going on making our, I think, sawmill, actually, is what we're getting to. Got three copper bars right there, dropping them mad bars. I am going to throw two more copper bars in here. That's going to take five hours, so we'll get them in the morning. And then we need three bricks in order to make the rest of this. So I'm going to refuel this one. And then with these stones we have available, let's go ahead and craft... Let's go, like, we've got 20 hours of wood. Let's go exactly 20 hours, then. We'll pick up all this stuff once it's done. And then I think we're looking a little bit low on wood supplies. And I still have some energy left, even though it's getting later on in the day. So we can probably get away. I need a better axe for that one, huh? I knew it was going to do that to me. It was going to be like, nope, I am a superior tree. Your stone implements have no effect on me, dear sir. I'm going to farm some stuff up, and I'll see our crafts get done in the morning. Day five, let's jump on outside and see how our crafts are going. Really stoked about this. I actually, I really am looking forward to this title. It's like, it's disappointing in a way. Like, I like the game a lot, but like, you want there to be more content in the game. You really sincerely do. You're like, oh, but I want to play more though. Let's go ahead and we'll jump into here. And we've got to make two copper blades. So we will craft two of those. So we've got our two copper blades. It takes three copper bars to make a plate. Dear Lord, that shit's going to be difficult to mash out. At the assembly station, we want to make a wood cutter. And so we need five stone bricks. That's going to be on our eight key, so there it is. And then we need a doubled up copper blade right there. And that has given us our sawmill. Let's go ahead and retrieve that. And I don't know exactly where I want to put it just yet. I'll put it like wherever though, it doesn't really matter. That works. I like that spot. What does the sawmill do for me? It'll make me some wooden boards. And then we can also make hardwood planks if we want to. But that requires power stones in order to run this thing. So I'm not sure we're actually going to be able to use that yet because as I understand it, I think power stones are only available inside the ruins. So what I'm going to do right now is let's actually craft up some goodies. I've got to go gather some wood very rapidly, otherwise we're not going to have enough stuff to craft up the goodies we need. And we'll go check and make sure that it wasn't just like a bug or anything like that when I went in. Uh, because when I went in, there was actually nothing inside the dungeon that you were able to access whatsoever. Like, you go in, it was just like a big empty dungeon room with a bunch of hallways and stuff like that. And there was nothing to loot, but I don't want to set the wrong pretense. We'll go check it out real fast, because it seems like that's where we're going to have to go next if we want to get the sawmill moving. Otherwise, ain't going to happen. So now that we're stocked up on wood, my next goal is to make a bunch of furniture that I can sell in town so I can get paid. Uh, we do have room for a practice sword, and I do think we have the materials for that. So I think that's not the worst idea. We can make ourselves a weapon so you guys can see what the combat is planned to be like. And then we'll also make five wooden storage chests. These are worth like 30 bucks a pop. We'll take them over, we will sell them, and we will make a little bit of money. Who knew that carpentry was so easy? I'll tell you who knows that carpentry is not easy. Uh, carpenters. My old man's a carpenter, and that job, it's a lot. He spends a lot of hours in there perfecting techniques for like perfectly shaving down bowls. And making all kinds of weird little pieces of furniture and stuff like that. It is, it is brutal how much effort it takes. Let's go over here and we'll have a look at one of these stores. And we'll sell off some of our wares. 
I think if we go to the bread shop, that'll work for me. The Portia Times, the barber shop, so we can change up our hairstyle. What is this right here? Can we do anything with this? No. All right, we can't do anything with that right there, so I'm not going to worry about it. This guy runs a furniture store, so I assume he's going to want furniture, right? Yup, sell all five of them. There we go. Make 130 bucks. We got $150, and that, my friends, is how the money gets made. Let's jump on up, and we'll go into the dungeon, and we'll see if maybe I just had a bug, or if actually it hasn't been implemented yet. I don't know. Coming up on the front of the dungeon. In the dungeon! The dungeon in the city! Why'd you guys build a city around dungeons? Seems like a bad plan. 80 galls. Yeah, sure. I don't know what a gall is, but a gall sounds good enough to me. Let's do this thing. Let's run on in and see what happens here. Bing, ding, 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 ding. Okay. Well, there's something going on in here. Got relic scanners. Got some other little things around. Maybe we'll be able to get some loot out of here. It says that it wants it to go this way. Can I chop those at all? I can get some free stone out of it. Orbs represent relics. Aim the reticle. Okay, so we can scan the room right here. Uh, these rocks weren't here when I loaded in last time. These little nubbins over here, they weren't around. So maybe we're able to mine on these and get something good out of them. Let's take a look here. Can I do anything like that? Oh, shit. There it is. Yep. These weren't here the last time I played. Like, the last time I loaded into the game, like, legit, there was no dungeon over here. So I guess uh, it must have been a bug when my game loaded. Like, none of this stuff seemed like it was workable. A little bit of stone over here. A little bit of sand so we can make some glass. Yeah, buddy. Can I mine... Like this right here. Can I just mine the wall? Oh, I can. I can just dig away at the wall. So it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a free building strategy involved as well. So I'm kind of wondering, like, with this stuff right here, is this going to be copper? Yeah, buddy. That's that stuff that I need right there. That's what I got to get. Let's get some. Ooh, there's an orb right there. It's in the earth. Let's see if we can dig for it. I didn't even notice that. Ooh, what was that? What did I just pick up? Oh, I got to level up. Okay. Well, then let's keep going this way and see if we can get after it. Where is it right here? It's like right in front of me. Okay, it's like right here. <gasps> what was that? Old parts. Okay. What do old parts do, I wonder? Huh. Well, this is kind of sweet. There's no monsters or anything. Like, I'd love to get in like a little fight or like a little fisticuffs in here. But still, I'm having fun. Like, I like this. I didn't realize it was going to have like free building, free flowing, you know, tunneling that you could do in here. I think the thing we're looking for is like right there. What is this? Uh, it's old parts. Okay. Maybe we can use the old parts to build something awesome. Let me use this. This is an orbit over here that I think I'm going to be interested in exploring. I'll get up out of here in just a minute, and I'll let you know what my spoils were as I got out of here. So before I ran out of juice, it looks like we've got about 51 ore available. Uh, we can fly around a little bit like this right here if you want to. I'm wondering if this right here is a tin vein. It looks a little bit different from the rest of the wall, but... I mean, it was 80 galls to get in here. Hopefully, we can make enough stuff to where we can make that money back. But I'm pretty stoked about this. I'm really happy. I don't know what happened in between the last time I played. But last time I played, like, none of these stones were here or anything. It was, like, just completely and totally empty in here. Interesting. Well, let's have a look around. Let's see what we can do here. Is there anything else going on? Like, if I scan around... Oh, yeah, there's relics, like, everywhere. We're going to need power stones, though, in order to get the... In order to get the sawmill up and running, we need power stones. And if we can't get that, it doesn't look like there's much in the walls. Instead, it looks like mostly it's going to be me digging downwards. We don't have any energy left, so there's nothing we can do here. Let's bail on back out, and we're going to do some crafting. I have no stamina left for any gathering or anything, though, so I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get a lot of this stuff done. Uh, fuel depleted over here. Okay, I can deal with that. I was going to leave this stuff to, to brew overnight, as it were, but we're out of wood, so... And I'm out of stamina, so it's kind of a catch-22. Either way, that's a really cool system. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on in there. As of right now, there's not a lot to do other than sit around and dig in there and find all the relics or whatever. But maybe I'll do some of it in my free time, and we'll come back for like a third final episode where I put everything together, and we end up with all the stuff that we need to have. So we've got that right there. Fuel is depleted on both of these, but I need to make bronze bars really badly so I can make better crafting tools, and therefore get better loot without having to go beneath the earth. That's the big issue. Let me gather up some of these sticks over here. These bushes right here actually work out pretty well for gathering wood. You get a decent amount out of them. It's not like an absolutely incredible amount, but if you don't have a choice, the bushes are pretty good, and that's what I'm going for. I'm going to see if we can have ourselves a bronze axe by the end of the day. Bronze axe, bronze pickaxe, whatever we can do. I'd probably favor the bronze pickaxe first over the... Can this be chopped? This cannot be chopped. That's just a piece of, like, the landscape then. 
Some stones over on this side. Some bushes over here. Some bushes over there. There's a party over here. There's a party over there. There we are. We should have enough wood to at least get going on some of the smelting stuff over here should we need to. I am going to refuel you. Yes, confirm it. And then we're going to make bronze bars this time around. Let's go ahead and craft those. And as many as you want to make. It looks like they won't be done till like tomorrow. But we can get five bronze bars out. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got plenty of ore sitting around to do lots of other things. So let's get some more copper bars going over here just in case we need them. I will refuel this forge right here. And then we will say copper bars. Let's get like eight of you. Sounds good to me. Stone bricks, I don't know if we're going to need those just yet, but all of our forges are working overtime right now. I feel kind of bad for them. They're putting in that midnight oil, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta, you gotta give them a little bit of a break over there, and that's why I told you to build multiple forges. What's up next on our list? We can get a basic skiver. We need ten wood and a copper plate. Okay, I can make that. I think the skiver is more than likely used for... I don't know, the skiver is more than likely used for some kind of textile work, it looks like. I don't know what a skiver is, so it's kind of a weird thing. As far as this goes, we're going to need a lot of hardwood and a lot of other random stuff in order to make that work. And then a water tank as well for a beginner builder. Any tree gives wood, and then simple water tank. You can use it anywhere to save water. Put on water-resistant paint. Okay. I don't think that's actually a thing I have to do, but... We're in a good position right now. You want to see what combat looks like? Let's go see what combat looks like. We're going to put the mitts on some of these bad guys over here so you can get a feel for what the combat is going to look like in this game too because we can absolutely get into fights uh, to gather things like hides, teeth, and stuff like that. So over here we've got some kind of strange bug that's floating around on an umbrella. How it's propelling that, I don't really know. But it's about to get its ass whooped is what's about to happen. Come here, urchin. Yup. Ugh, get some. And I'm going to dodge to the side. Ow, I've been struck. I've been struck. Ooh, he's a little dangerous. He thinks he's hardcore. We got three meat out of that. I might be able to sell some of this stuff, too, to get a little bit more money back so I can go back down into the mine and gather up a few more bits and pieces. Perfect. I, I do think the combat in this game is pretty awesome. Like, I think it's going to be cool. I think the roll animation could be tightened up a little bit and made feel a little bit more weighty a la Dark Souls. But other than that, like, I like the way it feels when you hit that. I like the way it feels when you hit enemies. It feels like there's impact. It feels like it matters when you hit an enemy. You know, it feels like you actually, you know, put the blade on him a little bit. Let's get rid of this llama. I feel like a douchebag for killing a cotton candy llama, but... I mean, it's a llama made out of cotton candy. Like, what kind of sick human being runs up on a llama made out of cotton candy and murders it? For those of you that don't know, llamas are, like, my favorite thing in the whole world. I like llamas a lot. Like, if I could have, like, ten pet llamas, I would totally have ten pet llamas. I would probably try to squeeze it up to, like, fifteen or twenty, just so I could have llamas. Like, I, I'm willing to bet they probably don't smell very good, but they're cute, and I want to hug them. Like, they seem like the kind of animal to be very huggable, so believe you me right now, as I beat these llamas to death with the fury of my blade, um, I don't do it out of malice, I do it out of necessity. This is kind of a slang that I don't want to take part in. I think the next thing that's on my list of things to do is that I want to sell off some of these extra things that I got from killing those monsters. If I could turn in and get like 30, 40 gold just for the raw materials that I pulled off of those monsters, That'd be okay, and it's entirely possible that I could just kill more monsters, and it's not a biggie. It's basically in the realm, so the sell price is one. Yeah, sell all of them. That's okay. I'll probably... The hides, I don't really know about the hides, can be used for crafting, and a little shabby, but can still be used for crafting. I'll more than likely get rid of... Oh, I did have milk for the kitty. What can I do with this? So, old relic parts, too damaged to be of use. Okay, sell off those. A little bit of extra cash. Every little bit helps. You got to do what you got to do, but it seems like most of our effort should be put into building furniture and selling it to these guys. In addition, we're going to need some more storage space anyway, so we may want to do that inside of our base. I'm going to head back. I'm just killing time for right now. In all honesty, we're almost out of stamina, and there's not a whole lot of other stuff to go around and do. And so, is there anything I can buy that will restore my stamina? Let me have a look here. Uh, OJ, 10 defense for 200 seconds, attack plus 10. Okay. Got soda and OJ, even better when you mix them together. Like, my mom makes this fruit punch that's a mixture of sherbet ice cream, like, uh, club soda, and, like, a couple of other things. It's just, like, amazing. She makes it at New Year's parties. It's really, really good. It's, like, crazy good. It's, like, smack your mama good. Inside of here, what furniture can I do? Stone tables? Yeah, actually. Make a couple of those. Stone tables sound great. If I can sell those off, those are worth 40 bucks a pop. 
If I could sell those off and make like 120 bucks, I wouldn't be against it. It takes us like 400 to unlock our next inventory row. And it's going to cost us money because in order to get the axe we want to craft tomorrow, I've got to go to A&G Construction and I need them to upgrade my workbench. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do that. But that is going to be something for the next time we play. Uh, this may be the last episode. I just wanted to show off what the game had available. I may play a little bit on my own and kind of come back with a bunch of stuff later on if that's what you would prefer. But at the same time, I think the game is pretty cool, and I think it's shaping up to be a pretty sweet little title. It's called My Time at Portia. If you wanted to play it, it's absolutely free. You can play it down below at the link that I give you. As well, if you like that I show off indie games every single day, check out the Patreon. It's a great way to support me. And stop by my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash splattercatgaming, every single day at 3 p.m. Uh, for a Twitch stream of stuff that I've been playing on the channel recently. Right now we got Darkwood going on, I'm probably going to do Observer. Uh, I've got a pretty good roster of games that I can't wait to get with, alright? I will see you all later. Hi to everybody.